Good morning, everyone. This is Aunt Beth. Welcome to my lamppost, the light that I'm currently living in. This morning, I wanted to talk to you about tough times. I pray for you all regularly, daily, and I believe the Lord has shown me, it's not a surprise, but that shortly there will be a jarring impact to our economy. And I don't know how, sh how soon that is. I, intuitively, I suspect within the next quarter of the year, but I don't know. But we know from the news, but we also know from the book of Revelation, more importantly, that things are going to get very tough financially. So I want to talk to you about that. And I also want to talk to you about a process that you can use to walk through tough times and give you a sample illustration of how I applied that to my life. So we know that tough times are coming from the news, but more importantly, the book of Revelation talks about the end times, which I happen to believe that we're in, that food prices will skyrocket to the point where it's gonna take all of your daily income to eat. You'll spend all your money just to provide food for yourself and your family and that um, there will be a lot of disease and death. Actually, the word says that 25% of the world's population will die due to um, disease and war. So that's not a pretty picture. But I wanna talk to, because there is hope as far as how we personally can navigate through this The, it's really a very simple process and then I'll walk it out for you as an example in my own life but step one is to seek God for wisdom and step two is do what he says now do what he says in the word but also do what he says personally so what does the word say? Well, the word says, first of all, if you're wise, you're wise for yourself. The first rule in life saving is to secure yourself before you're any good to anybody else. The second thing the word says is don't be lazy. <laughs> I love what it says about the ant. Go to the ant, you sluggard, and be wise. Who she's not wise. The ant is very wise, even though she's very small. She's very wise, and provides food for herself when it's available. She stores it up. I think the word. Well, the word says a lot about consistency and diligence, also that being consistent in your actions. We also need to give God something to work with. Both tithing and giving. Uh, Proverbs talks about, you know, honor the Lord with your finances and he'll make sure that your barns are filled with plenty. So what's my priorities and all this. We also, uh, the other reason is we reap what we sow. What are you sowing? Are you giving God anything to work with? Think of the little boy with the loaves and fishes. They gave it to Jesus and the whole multitudes were f fed. So 
God will see you through. He will see you through. But we have to stay in position to hear him. And I'm talking to myself just as much as the rest of you. I want to tell you a quick story. But all of it is summed up with the fact that it's our job to be obedient. It's God's job to provide. Just because you were obedient in the past doesn't give you a free pass on the future. So I'm talking to myself just as much as anybody else, but way back in the dark ages, when we were worried about Y2K, usually spend New Year's Eve and New Year's Day just being quiet and seeking the Lord. And I asked him about Y2K. And he didn't confirm. He just said, buy two of everything when you go to the store. So, meaning everything that I had used. So, I did. I started going to the grocery store when I went, and instead of buying one can of soup, I'd buy two. Instead of buying one thing of shampoo, I'd buy two. You know, you get the point. And I started building up quite a storehouse. In April of that year, 1999, I lost my job. And it was 15 months before I found another one. Although I worked part-time consulting and, you know, I was not laying around just watching television and eating bonbons. But it took me 15 months before I found another job. And God did wonders during that time. It was a fabulous time, although it was scary because I didn't have any money. But those provisions saw me through. Now, it would have been easy to say, oh, God says Y2K is going to happen. No, that wasn't the word. The word was buy two of everything when you go to the grocery store. So seek God and do what he says. First of all, as a foundation to build your life on in the whatever the word says to do. And secondly, whatever God says to you specifically. You know, I went through that whole year and although there were times in the grocery store where I felt like I wanted something, but I shouldn't get it. You know, I never went without. God was so faithful. He met all my need. Didn't necessarily meet all my wants, but he met all my need. And it's funny, the shampoo story. I had, I had gotten a job and the first week of my paycheck, I was standing in the shower and um, washing my hair and shampoo ran out. And you know, I realized that I'd used that shampoo bottle for like six, eight months the whole time I was without a job. And it didn't run out until I had money to replace it. And I didn't know it until I was at the end of the road, how God had met my need miraculously. So don't get in fear. God can't get to you there, you know. It's sort of the, what was the name of that TV show where they had a cone of silence? But peace will be a shield over you during this time. Stay in peace. Seek God, be obedient, 
we'll get through this. It's going to be tough. But you'll look back on this time in your life and it'll be one of the most fabulous times in your life for the presence of God that walks with you every step of the way. It's going to be all right. So have a fabulous day. All God's best.